Hey everybody, Jason here with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is datums for castings, which is a very common topic that gets brought up in a lot of our courses by our students. Uh, and so today we're going to try and do a little bit of a deep dive to try and answer the question that was submitted. And that is, I'm trying to understand what the purpose of this generous position tolerance back to a cast datum is for. The cast holes are used for machining setup. Uh, here's the drawing that was submitted. Now there's a handful of things that are uh, not necessarily legal and are wrong on this drawing. I'll point those out quickly. Uh, but then we're going to move on to an example that I've created to try and help explain how we should be using uh, datums and datum structures in a casting sort of setting. So right out of the gate, we can see we have some datum targets, datum target X1, X2, and X3, which are identifying datum targets that set up datum X. So we have datum X. We also have datum feature Y and datum feature B being, or Z being identified here. Uh, so between X, Y, and Z on the cast surface, we have enough datum features, enough datums to constrain all six degrees of freedom. So we can go ahead and start controlling other features back to these cast surfaces. And that's what you see here. We have um, Z and Y being used to control the location of these holes back to those cast surfaces. However, oftentimes when we're talking about castings, we're also doing some post-processing. We're doing some machining on those cast surfaces. And so more than likely these features over here are being machined on this cast surface after we get the casting in. And often with castings, when we do machine on those castings, we do care about the location of the machined features back to the other machined features. We don't necessarily always care where the machine features end up in the casting as long as they end up somewhere usable, right? So the functionality of the features that are being machined are back to the other machined features. But we also need to begin to locate those features somewhere on the casting to make sure that we don't have thin walls or the machine features fall off the edge of the casting. A lot of reasons to have that sort of datum structure. So what we end up having to do is create a datum structure link between the datum structure created by the machine features and the datum structure by the cast surfaces. We want some relationship between these two sort of worlds. And so that's what we're seeing here. We have datum A uh, being identified here, B being identified here, and C being identified here using the machined features. But we also see a tie between those machine features back to the cast surfaces. And that's perfectly legal. We'll show you a couple ways to do this. Uh, a couple things I'm gonna point out here that aren't necessarily legal is we can't necessarily attach feature control frames like we see here to the datum feature symbol to identify these controls here. Although it's probably obvious to the interpreter that these feature control frames are applied to this feature here, that is not something that the standard allows us to do. We would have to have a leader arrow to uh, the uh, surface itself or attach it to the feature of size and then the datum feature symbol go ahead and can then be attached to the feature control frame themselves. Again, just trying to follow the standard. Uh, but again, I can interpret this and understand what the intent was. Uh, additionally, if this parallelism is being called back to datum A, and this surface here is also being identified as datum feature A, we can't control parallelism back to ourself. And so this would be a null and void feature control frame. This is not legal. Um, not sure what the interpretation and the intent was here, but we can certainly have flatness. Uh, and we can certainly have B before A. So for this question here, B can come before A. Uh, just because A becomes before B in the alphabet does not necessarily mean it has to in a feature control frame. All we're doing by saying B first here and then A is that when we are locating this hole, we care about location and orientation to B first before we care about any location and orientations to A. Uh, in this specific scenario, uh, a here is not doing anything. All of the rotation and orientations that uh, B can control for this hole here uh, override anything that A can do. Uh, a can control translation this direction, but this hole doesn't need location in that direction at all uh, for this example specifically. So um, not illegal to have A there, just is not doing anything. So let's go through a better example here to talk about how datum targets and datum reference frames and datum structures, uh, multiple datum structures, can help us out in the world of casting drawings. 
So I have a simple block here, uh, a cast block, and you can see that we have some datum targets being identified. So again, we're missing a lot of basic dimensions. These drawings are by no means complete drawings. Um, but nonetheless, we have some datum targets that identify datum X. So on the far side of this drawing view, so on the back side here, we have three datum target points, X1, X2, and X3, that give us datum X. And then we also have uh, datum target lines y1 and y2 in these locations again basic dimensions would be locating these on the drawing from each other but for clarity purposes I left those off y1 y2 uh, are going to identify datum y and so that's going to stop translation and rotation this way and then we also finally have z which is a line uh, over here on this surface uh, just Z1 is going to give us datum Z. So between datums X, Y, and Z, we've fully constrained all six degrees of freedom. Three points on this back surface, two points on this side surface, and at least one point on this surface over here, stopping six degrees of freedom. So we have a fully constrained datum reference frame that we can then go ahead and control all of or some of our features uh, that we're going to machine in this block back to those datums. We can also control the other um, surfaces on this part. We can control this surface or this surface or this stepped surface here. All of those surfaces can be controlled back to X, Y, and Z. So let's go ahead and add some more controls. And now you can see that we have more controls controlling some machined features. Uh, we have machined features on this part now that are being controlled to this datum reference frame X, Y, and Z. The location of this through hole is with respect to X, Y, and Z. The location of this machined hole is with respect to X, Y, and Z. So you can see that we know the location of this hole from our datum features, right? It's perpendicular to X, it's located from Y, it's located from Z. And again, these are incomplete drawings. We would see basic dimensions and center lines for all of these, but I left all those off for clarity. Um, but we can control these features in this way. And we can control all the surfaces. So we can control this stepped surface here with this feature control frame. So we can control everything back to X, Y, and Z. That's sort of uh, the easiest, quickest way uh, to control your features and apply tolerances back to the cast surfaces. But what's happening is a bit of a tolerance stack up. Um, the location of this diameter is back to this surface and this surface. And the location of this diameter is back to this surface and this surface, rather than the location of this diameter with respect to this diameter. So there is a, there's, a, there's an indirect stack up that we would have to be comfortable with as designers when we pick these sort of values. Uh, the location of this pattern of holes is going to be back to the outside surface, not necessarily this center diameter. And more than likely, functionality says to us that I care about the location of these four holes with respect to the center hole more than I care about both of them back to the outside surface, right? Now we can do a tolerance analysis to make sure that we're still okay, but I would argue that it'd be better to have a datum structure that links these four holes with respect to the center hole if that's the functional intent. And so that's the next step in the process. That's one more step that makes things advanced. So we're gonna go ahead and re-identify this surface here as datum feature A. This surface is still being controlled back to X, Y, and Z. It's fully constrained to the uh, cast surfaces, but we've re-identified that as datum feature A. So now we can use that datum feature to locate things. And so what we can do is we can re-identify the location of this through hole here in the middle with A first instead of X. We likely care that this hole is perpendicular to this surface more than we care about that hole being perpendicular to the cast surface. But we needed that cast surface as a datum to locate and begin locating some of our machined features. And so we have A here first, and then we also can locate this hole back to the datum structure from the cast surfaces. So we want this thing to be located. We don't want this thing really close to the edge. We still wanna locate that, but we also wanna make sure it's perpendicular to this surface. So we're gonna locate it to the cast surfaces and make sure it's perpendicular to this new surface here. So we have A, Y, Z for this datum structure, and then we identify this feature, this through hole, as datum feature B. 
another feature that we can begin controlling other machined features back to in location. And we'll do that exactly right here. We see that this hole, we likely care that this hole is perpendicular to A. We want that hole located from B, right? Located from the new B. We could locate it from Z and Y, but we want to relocate that and control that position of that hole with respect to B because that's the functional intent. But we also want to make sure to control it in some level to Z to lock in that six degree of freedom. So we're going to mix in Z here to control, fully control that location to both the machine surface as well as the cast surface here. So we can see we can mix up uh, our datums. And by the time we get A, B, and then re-identify this feature as C, we have potential to have a datum reference frame completely using only the new machined features. So this surface here is primary, this cylinder here is secondary, this cylinder here as tertiary stopping that rotation, that clocking rotation. So we have a fully constrainable new datum reference frame to A, B, and C, but that datum reference frame has a relevance back to X, Y, and Z. And that's important because if we didn't have that, then we could have this entire datum reference frame shift over and fall off the side of the castings if we didn't reference uh, X, Y, or Z in any of our qualifying feature control frames for the new datums. So again, that's keeping everything on the casting uh, located there. So this is another method in the way that we can control machined features on a cast surface and keep those datum reference frames relative to each other. Now, to take this one step further to relate to the sample drawing the student sent us, let's say that in the previous example, we didn't care so much about the location of this surface with respect to the casting. There was a lot of room for location and orientation error back to the casting for the surface. What we can do is we can leave that back to XYZ and leave it really wide open, a large amount of tolerance in profile back to those cast surfaces. This surface here is datum A, but with, relative to all the cast surfaces, it can have a lot of room to move around. So we're gonna leave that really loose at 30,000th profile. That controls location orientation of this surface to those cast surfaces. But then we can re-identify and say, nope, I wanna make sure that's really, uh, has good form because I'm gonna utilize it as datum feature A. So that's a good way to um, control this surface back to your cast surfaces and then recontrol or refine the form of it because it's going to be used as a new primary datum for other features to be referenced to. That's step one. And then we noticed over here that, okay, well, I don't really care too much about the position of this through hole to these cast outside surfaces. There's enough room in my tolerance calculations, there's enough room in my tolerance stack ups, there's enough room in the material of the casting to have a relatively loose location of this hole with respect to the cast outside surfaces. Uh, if that's the case, then give that manufacturing option back to the machinist to say, you know, you can not have to dial in the location of this so tightly. So you can have a loose reference back to X, Y, and Z. But what I really care about is when you do make this hole, all it has to be is perpendicular to this surface because that's how that hole is going to function. When something else comes in and mates, I want to make sure this hole is perpendicular to that surface. I don't necessarily care if the hole is perpendicular to this cast surface um, because I have a lot of room, right? If that cast surface looks like this, but I machined this surface here, I want this through hole perpendicular to a tighter tolerance to that through hole, not necessarily tight to X up here. So we can certainly do that. We can loosen up the position tolerance back to the cast surfaces, but refine that orientation to A. So perfectly good reason to do this. You're giving manufacturing all the tolerances you can and only dialing in where you care. And then over here, we see that we have uh, this position being qualified. And again, the location of this hole back to X, Y, and Z may not matter. You may have a lot of room for tolerance stack ups. You might have a lot of room for this hole to drift in its location with respect to the outside here. Uh, but we still want to control that, right? We don't want it to fall off. We don't want to just leave it completely off. We want it to some level of accuracy. But what we truly care about is when you make this hole, it needs to have decent location and orientation to A and B 
uh, because that's the functional intent. I want it perpendicular to the surface again, and I want it located from the center of this hole for some functional reason, right? That's the reason we chose this as a tertiary datum. We want to make sure it has good location back to the primary and secondary datums. That is qualifying datum feature C. So now we've qualified A, B, and C, and we've also kept their relative locations uh, to a looser tolerance back to the castings because the tolerance stack ups and the castings can allow that. The functional location of these holes back to the cast surfaces is not important as much as they are to themselves, uh, creating that new datum reference frame. And then we can see that new datum reference frame A, B, and C being used here again, showing us that we can control all the new machined features back to this A, B, and C in a very functional way, eliminating unnecessary tolerance stack ups. And then anything that you would want to control back to the cast surfaces, let's say this surface over, and then anything you want to control back to the cast surfaces of X, Y, and Z, you can certainly still do that. So maybe this step surface here um, is a surface that you don't really care about its location. You can control that and leave that controlled as a cast surface, as cast, and its location back to X, Y, and Z is all you care about, not necessarily the location of this with respect to A, B, and C. So uh, again, Many ways to do this. Um, you can start out simple and then start adding things, but this is the most complex way to do it. Uh, it is giving more tolerance back to the manufacturing to make decisions where they need to, and you're only controlling location where it's necessary. Uh, again, hopefully that answers your question a little bit there uh, as to why we have a looser tolerance back to the uh, cast datum reference frame. You're simply locating these holes in a loose sort of way, but you're locating the machine features closer to each other to reestablish a new datum reference frame for all of the other machined features. So thanks for tuning in and hopefully this helped clarify your question. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.